Hello everyone, uh, Mike here. Uh, this is my first video um, car making a, a car repair. Uh, wanted to show everybody how this was done because I haven't seen any videos of it uh, for the Grand Prix uh, on YouTube. I assume it would be the same for Luminas and for Impalas and possibly even uh, Old Intrigue, a couple other GM products. But what's going on here is we have a broken stabilizer bar. Uh, it broke right near the stabilizer link on the right side of the car. And I'll give you a shot of that right here. Okay, I think you can see that pretty well. Is that separated right there? You can see the bushings and the link and the through bolt and everything, and then obviously the disconnected uh, piece of metal. Now, uh, the way GM does this, huh, upside down, uh, the way GM does this, this is a stamped uh, steel uh, anti roll bar or sway bar, as many people call it. And uh, what happens is uh, rust gets in there and that's stamping um, and it fails because, uh, you know, here in Michigan, we have uh, a lot of salt on the road. So uh, this is a 2003 Grand Prix GTP. Um, so I think this procedure would be the same for any Grand Prix or similar car. Um, also, uh, you know, just to show you, um, I've already got obviously gotten the wheels off of it. I'm just about to put the car up on jack stands and take the jack out from under it so that I have more space to work. Uh, and of course the stands make it safer. Don't get under your car without jack stands. All right, as you can see now I have the car supported by stands. I made sure not to put the stands under the uh, cradle where the engine uh, mount is because as you can see the sway bar is connected there and I'm thinking I may have to lower these bolts here um, to give myself a little bit of extra clearance. But uh, I've taken the jack out, give myself a little bit extra room and uh, here you can see this side is uh, is actually starting to fail also so this bar has got to go. Now the next thing to do is uh, put a little penetrating oil on those old rusty fasteners. Hopefully they'll come off easily and they won't break. Uh, but of course if they do break, uh, at least the ones on the uh, sway bar link uh, will be replaced. These here uh, will be replaced with the new bar. Most bars, uh, in fact I haven't seen a bar kit that hasn't come with it. So. Uh, but these are the ones I'm more worried about back here uh, at this bushing uh, uh, cap because uh, those go down through the frame there and uh, we don't want to break those off for sure. Well, as you can see here, uh, taking this top bolt off and uh, the bottom side of the, the bar has failed uh, on this side too. So now I'm just going to remove this link and I'm going to have to hammer that out a little bit, but it should come out fairly easy. Well, it took me a little bit of time to get this out, as you can see uh, by the narrowing of the shaft here, uh, right, right in this area and right here. This is all very corroded and uh, would have probably broken sooner or later anyhow. Uh, here's part of the stabilizer bar that uh, already failed. And uh, here's what it looks like after I've removed the link. And I'm going to start working on those bolts next. Uh, there's not a lot of room up in there, so um, it's going to be a little tough to get on those. Hopefully uh, it won't cause any damage. Also, I should point out here that uh, this is 13 millimeter bolt uh, on each end, so you're going to need a. I used an impact on the bottom with a 13 millimeter impact socket, and a, uh, I just used a uh, breaker bar with my Deepwell 13 millimeter 
on the top and that worked out pretty well. Okay, I had a little bit of, of a tough time getting these bolts out here uh, for the stabilizer bar bushing cap. Um, so what I've done is uh, supported the engine cradle with my jack and loosened the uh, bolts here that hold the rear of the engine cradle uh, to the chassis. And uh, that's given me some extra clearance here so I can get better tools on this. Uh, up to now I've only been able to move it uh, just a, a tiny bit at a time by pulling real hard on a box end wrench uh, which is kind of a drag. So uh, I've got this lowered down a little bit now and I'm going to give it a shot with uh, my air tools. Uh, I have an air ratchet. We'll see if we can get it off that way. Well, as you can see, I've uh, finally gotten that bracket off. It took me quite a while and a lot of muscle. Uh, it's impossible to get air tool down in there. Uh, so I had to do it all by hand. Um, not too easy. Uh, but now that I've got that free uh, and I was able to get the other side off uh, very easily, uh, I've taken the bracket and the bushing off. You can see how rusty those are. Uh, so that I'll have the smallest piece possible to pull through to the other side. Also, I've let the back of the engine down. It's this engine cradle. Um, two 18 millimeter bolts. Those came out real easy. Uh, and if I didn't mention it before, these are 15s that you have to get out of there. And this is the side that was broken. There's a good shot of the broken end there. Um, let me turn the light on here, see a little better. There we go. Um, and since that was broken, um, and I thought, well, it might be easier to pull it out from the other side, but that means it'll be tougher to put the new bar in. And since I want to prove to myself that I can get the new bar in, I'm going to pull the bar out from this side. Um, these two bolts came out pretty easily. And I'm just going to pull the bar back. You can see I've still got that uh, retainer for the bushing, and the bushing is still on there. I'm going to pull the bar toward me, and then you uh, should just be able to hammer that off. Um, I just hit it a few times with the hammer, a couple of good blows, and it, and it came free. Another thing worth mentioning is uh, you probably, if, uh, if you're going to need new tie rod ends, uh, this car doesn't need them, but if you're going to need them, this would be the time to do it because the uh, tie rod end does get in your way quite a bit. Uh, so it would be kind of nice to get that out of there. Um, and I do uh, uh, also want to mention that turning the wheel uh, one way or another does help give you clearance to those bolts. Uh, in this case, turning the wheel all the way to the left gave me better clearance on this side. Uh, I can't recall which way I turned it for the other side, but I know I had to turn it. So here's the old sway bar, stabilizer bar, the end broken off. And there's the new part, $99 at Advance Auto Parts. And it comes with all the bushings and the links. Okay, we got the new bar in the general position that it should be. Um, took a helper and a little bit of weaseling it around, but uh, we got it in place. Um, you may have to turn the steering wheel back and forth uh, for it to clear the tie rod end but have no fear, it will. Okay, now we're ready to install the new sway bar links uh, and <clears throat> the bushings. And those are the bushing bolts that came with. Uh, I rather like the ones that the factory used a little bit better. Uh, let me show you one of those. <coughs> the factory bolts you may prefer, they have this uh, little taper at the end, I don't know if you can see that, uh, that helps you start them into the um, 
captive nut or the threaded part that's uh, in the in the subframe uh, where these don't plus they're a little bit longer so I think I might clean these up maybe wire brush them a little bit and uh, reuse them they don't look too rusty um, can't get this to focus on it but they don't look too bad so I think that might those might go back in okay I started these by hand I did decide to go with the uh, with the new bolts uh, one of the old bolts looked like it had a uh, problem with the threads, so uh, I decided to hedge my bets, go with the new bolts there. Um, and they started with no problem. As you can see, I've got this lined up. I don't have the link in yet. Uh, I thought it'd be better to put the uh, bushings and the brackets in first, and then I can lift this up but, uh, and put the links in. But I'm going to leave that loose until I've got everything assembled, um, you know, at least loosely assembled, and then go back and tighten everything down. Okay, I've got this link uh, together. Uh, as you can see, the rod comes up, or the bolt comes up from the bottom and uh, the nuts at the top that's the way the factory assembly was I don't know if this will give you a better look at it or not but uh, this link is assembled uh, not tightened down yet I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side this is still loose and then we'll tighten everything down okay well as you can see I've got everything uh, back where it should be tightened up around the other side here There's a little more light uh, that uh, rear bolt there uh, gave me fits again but uh, just made sure it was well lubricated and wasn't cross threaded um, and uh, ran it in backed it out a couple of times and uh, it finally uh, decided it would go down for me uh, but uh, you can see again the new bar is quite a lot nicer. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how this car handles now. I always thought it had quite a bit of lean for a GTP, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, part of that could be too that uh, the uh, not only was the bar hollow, but it was corroded. So uh, anyway, uh, that about sews it up. I do have the chassis. Uh, the subframe still separated from the chassis quite a bit. Well, let's see if I can get that to where you can see it pretty well. Um, there it is right there. Um, all that's left to do really is to raise that back up with the jack, put the giant bolt back in it. I didn't back the bolt out of the other side all the way uh, because I didn't want uh, to have to support the other side with a jack as well. Um, once I'd gotten enough room, I thought enough was enough. Uh, didn't want anything to move too far beyond its tolerances. But uh, I'll go ahead and check back in once I get the car back together and take it for a test drive and let you know how it works. Well, okay, the car is done. Uh, I took it for a test drive. It drives great. In fact, it handles much, much better than it ever did before. I've had this car for uh, quite a long time, and I always thought it was a little sloppy for a GTP, especially considering that was supposed to be the top performance package for this car. Uh, this bar by Dorman, which I got at Advanced Auto Parts, um, is a solid steel bar where the factory used a tubular bar um, which is why I think that bar failed but uh, at any rate the uh, the Dorman bar is much better and uh, it really makes this car corner flat and was worth the time and effort to put it on I almost wish I would have put it on years ago uh, when I had to drive the car every day well the job is done now and I hope you learned a lot by watching this I noticed uh, there was no other videos of how to do this on YouTube. I think there was one for Montana, but uh, it was similar, but there was a lot more clearance on that vehicle. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching and I uh, hope to see you again soon.